On behalf of Rare Genomics Institute and rare disease patients all over the world, I want to welcome you to our first Amplified Hope Roundtable Conference. We are excited uh, to be able to present to you today stories, very powerful stories of patients and the families that are affected by them, as well as experts and professionals in their field that affect this from crowdfunding to genetic testing. So at Rare Genomics, we are trying to help rare disease families to overcome barriers and find solutions. And as we know, often these families go from doctor to doctor and test after test, sometimes for years looking for answers. So that's why exome sequencing can be a powerful tool to help them find a diagnosis. These are some of our findings as we continue to build our program, and we work alongside our patients and our families, providing them with the tools and knowledge and information on their rare disease journeys. My son was actually um, admitted for about 36 hours into the hospital at the beginning of January, I, I got a bill for about $4,000 uh, the day before I came here. So, you know, for some people that, that is, it's a killer. You know? You know, this is very much a, a personal endeavor for me to really connect with as many of you um, as possible because frankly, uh, together we're always stronger and we're all, you know, that, that drop in the middle of that ripple and now we need to go out and together create some waves. So if there is someone else in the audience that want, that has, maybe you've raised like $100,000 and you don't want to spend the time putting together the research proposals, what we provide as a service is we will go out and find the best scientists and um, allow you to... Um, put up the grant for that specific research topic. I mean, what a treat it is to really sort of see this day unfold in terms of the mission of rare genomics and what we're trying to do for patients. Um, in the first section, we talked, as you guys heard, heard a lot about sort of the finance aspects of crowdfunding and helping on the patients. Um, the, second si the second half, uh, we'll talk about a little bit about the science um, and um, about genetic sequencing, exome sequencing, and how this is helpful for patients. From, you know, reaching out and seeing all the crowdfunding and the ability to help research, this is, could be a really important thing for these patients. They now have the people to reach out to, to maybe do research on their gene, especially if they're novel genes and you don't know for sure. You can see if there are researchers that are interested in your condition and your set of symptoms and how that could really help the research community at large. Through our foundation, we've been able to work a lot in education and educating high school biology classrooms on um, how to use your voice, how to advocate for your medical needs. We merge the science with the advocacy because I think it's so imperative that we do that. We thank all the scientists and all of their hard work in the years that they have put into making this come to fruition for kids like mine and kids like so many that are represented in the audience. The undiagnosed population has a unique challenge is that unlike disease specific groups, families who are undiagnosed don't want to invest too much time in a community of, uh, of undiagnosed because they want to reach the community that they're really going to be able to connect with. We at Rare Genomics help try to guide families through this genomic testing landscape. We all know that at the end of the day, the real experts are the parents. We first created a nonprofit foundation, uh, volunteers, just you know, us as parents and then and the volunteers. We still are a volunteer organization today. But we had a need. We had an urgent need for a cure. It, we had to do it rapidly. We had a limited amount of time to make a difference for our daughter Eliza and then for other children as well. Every person alive, healthy or sick, has built-in genetic defects. In the majority of human lives, these defects cause no damage, but in an unlucky few, like my son, one small mistake creates a cataclysm of health concerns. But these tiny random changes make us, made as human DNA plugs along into the future may hold a key to positive evolutionary change as well. My advice to parents facing similar circumstances would be to never give up hope. Never stop searching. Push for answers and don't accept complacency from your medical team. Try to take things one day at a time and always trust your instincts.
Thank you.